let's think now what would happen if we replace one of the hydrogens in cyclohexane with another substituent. And frankly, to see this effect, it could be almost any other substituent. But we're going to start out with a methyl group. So methyl cyclohexane. Well, in this chair conformation, the methyl group is in the equatorial position. And this modification has made very little difference. But critically, if this chair were to ring flip to the alternate chair conformation, the methyl group would now be in the axial position. And this makes a big difference. The axial methyl is now in close proximity to two other hydrogens within the molecule, creating steric strain. This type of steric strain is called 1,3 diaxial interaction. And there are two. 1,3 diaxial interactions in this molecule. This means that the chair conformation with the methyl group in the equatorial position is more desirable due to its lower energy than the chair conformation where the methyl group is in the axial position. Let's take a look at this axial methyl chair conformation from a Newman projection point of view. We can still very clearly see the two 1 3 diaxial interactions. Each hydrogen methyl 1 3 diaxial interaction contributes 3.8 kilojoules per mole of energy to the molecule. So, because we have two such interactions in this molecule, they have created a total of 7.6 kilojoules per mole extra energy. The 1 3 diaxial interaction effect is also found in gauche butane. And this is why gauche butane has a higher energy than anti staggered butane. The 1 3 diaxial interaction is a partnership. It's due to the interaction both between the methyl group and the hydrogen. If we remove the hydrogen from the equation, it's not a 1,3 diaxial interaction anymore. Let's see what happens if we replace the critical carbon hydrogen bonds with an oxygen. Now, instead of a hydrogen, you have a lone pair, which is much, much smaller. So here, we still have an axial methyl group in a six membered ring, but unusually, it doesn't matter because we don't have 1,3 diaxial interactions, even though the methyl group is axial. So that's a methyl group. Naturally, we can have a variety of substituents and see a similar effect. Where the substituents are small, the 1,3 diaxial interaction creates less energy. Where the substituent is larger, the amount of energy created by the 1 3 axial interaction is also bigger. And if we have very big substituents, well, the energy caused by the 1 3 diaxial interaction also significantly increases. It's interesting to compare the T butyl group or TERT butyl group with the phenyl group. The phenyl group has more atoms in it. And if you view it from one direction, as we're seeing now, it seems larger than the tert butyl group. But if we are to rotate it by just 90 degrees, it seems very small now. This is not true of the T butyl group that seems pretty big no matter how you rotate it. And so the T butyl group in a 1 3 diaxial interaction creates more energy for the molecule than if it's a phenyl group. In fact, the tert butyl group is considered to lock the chair, so it cannot practically ring flip, forcing the T-butyl group to always be in the equatorial position. 